You ready to learn something? Watch this video. If you're a millionaire already, watch Grant Cardone. And if not, and you wanna be, watch this video to learn not only how the Grant Cardone business model really works, but to learn how you can make it happen just like Grant. If you're a qualified investor and you love real estate, but you don't have the time, you can't find the deals and you don't have the know-how, Go to Cardone Cal when the banks in Wall Street tell you not to invest your own money but to give it to them because you're not smart enough, they have an agenda. And you don't have the know-how. Go to Cardone Capital. Agenda. See, I think people watching financial videos on YouTube are smart people, and I want to share a different perspective. I'm not trying to compare myself to Grant Cardone. He's 59 years old, I'm 26. But what I do have to offer is a completely different perspective. And this is good information that you could take away to learn how to make yourself a millionaire. See, I'm from the mindset that everybody has something to share. Agents, bankers. They're, they're bankers, they're stupid. The reason I'd rather a bank than a private is because banks will provide you with protection and intelligence. Am I a real estate agent? Yep, I'm a real estate broker and an investor. Before you think cynically that I'm trying to get more business by making these videos, ultimately I could get a much better ROI by doing something other than making these videos if my goal was to get more clients. However, being a licensed lender myself, being a real estate broker myself, and running two different companies, a construction company and a real estate brokerage with seven full-time employees, I think I have a unique perspective to share with you. And especially if you like Grant Cardone, you're gonna like this video. See, I consider myself a halfway point between Dave Ramsey and Grant Cardone mixed in with the work ethic of Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, something that's important to know about Grant Cardone, first of all, is when he says he owns 4,000 units, don't think 4,000 single family houses like this. Think maybe 10 complexes that have about 400 units in each of them. That's the 4,000 units we're talking about. He does not personally own a net worth of $750 million. First of all, $750 million is a reference to the deal volume they've done. The fund's called Cardone Capital. The value of the assets they control is probably closer to $500 million, and I'm taking this straight from their website, and that's not to water it down either. On top of that, Grant is a huge proponent of leverage. That's debt. Dude, this is debt right there. This is debt. This is all debt. I got it. This is, this is backed by one thing, debt. I get it. I get it, it's all, it's all garbage. The whole game is garbage. So really he's become a master at mastering other people's money and then using other people's money to leverage more other people's money. Poor guy is next to the trash. This is a nice house. This is a super high end area. You don't want to start here. This is where you end up in the future. Except this part. Albert. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. This is Kevin Parker. Oh my gosh, welcome aboard. He's the crazy guy that has more energy than six of us. <laughs> Love it. What a great backyard, this is a great house. Howdy, how you doing? Back to Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone is what's called a syndicator. Now, let's define what a real estate syndicator is. Is with, like, if you could find a guy like me, okay? YouTube's available to everybody, okay? We just want people to invest with us that don't have the time, don't have maybe the credit. A real estate syndicator is somebody who takes other folks' money and puts together funds. These are called deals. So for example, if there's a $32 million purchase deal folks wanna make, Grant Cardone sets up the deal. I respect their honesty. So you set up a $32 million deal, you're gonna need to have money to buy that deal. Say you need $8 million because you're able to finance $24 million of it. You get 80 people together that each put in $100,000, you got your $8 million. But you're gonna take a fee too. You're gonna take a fee every time a property is purchased, while it's being managed, and when it goes to sell. And I get my little piece for managing the deal and finding the deal and taking care of it and, and signing on the debt. That's what a syndicator is, and they also take a share of the profits. So that when it's all over and everybody splits up everything and I give you yours and I take mine. So let's dive into the exact numbers that Grant Cardone uses to see how his business model really works and why you should care. He has hint, the reason you should care is because you could make more money yourself especially before you're qualified and an accredited investor. Are you an accredited investor with $350,000 in the bank? That's the key out of this whole video. If you don't yet have millions, that's how I started. Remember, I started this video with if you don't yet have millions, you gotta watch this video. It's because I wanna help you get to where you can be an accredited investor, which I could be wrong, but maybe they don't care about helping people who are not already accredited investors which makes sense because their business model is about looking for accredited investors, not poorer people. 
You know what the positive is though? What? I know we talked about the lower income, people making lower income. Yeah, yeah. It's actually kind of an advantage, right? Because you know, these people are probably never gonna make more than $35,000, $40,000 yeah. a year. Yeah. And if then you wanna throw money into Grant's fund, awesome, I'm all for it. Maybe by then I'll even have a fund. <laughs> That's 62, but I'm sweating. What's happening? Subscribe. See, ordinarily you or I couldn't buy a big project of 400 units for $32 million or whatever. Now you could finance $24 million of it and you need to raise $8 million. $1 at a time, baby. <laughs> $1 at a time. So you round up 80 people to each put in $100,000 and everybody owns 1 80th of the share. Grant Cardone then promises due to the cash flow that obviously they're gonna pencil out up front. We'll give you 6% of your money back every year. The fund's called Cardone Capital. We pay a 6% per month. I'm sorry, 6% per year. But see, that's boring. If somebody was just wanting to get 6%, they wouldn't invest in a syndication company. That'd be too boring. They want the potential for more. They want the promise of more, not the guarantee of more. If you just wanted 6%, you could invest in California municipal bonds. Since those aren't taxed, they usually work out to about 6% return. Syndicators make you the promise that they're gonna buy this complex for $32 million. Then they're gonna turn around and flip it. Let's say, let's just go crazy with the numbers here, okay? Let's say they could flip it for twice the value. They're not gonna flip it tomorrow for twice the value. They're gonna say, we're gonna have this fund for, let's say 10 years. In 10 years, we're projecting we could sell this for $64 million. That means you're gonna 2X your money. But it's a little more complicated than that. See, where does the benefit for Grant come in? Let's talk about that. Because remember, a syndication is a business. Dude, it's, it's a real business. Like, it's a real business. There's one person that controls the asset using other people's money, the investor's money. It's your money. The benefit to you is you don't have to do anything. You send your money in and you wait to get a statement at the end of the year to see what the expenses are, see what your 6% is, and to see if there was any bonus left over. As soon as a fund closes or when a building sells, expenses are minus off and you get your hopefully appreciated share. All of this works really well in an appreciating market. It's very easy for any syndicator to say, in five years, this place is going to be worth more. In 10 years, it's going to be worth more. I want you to have two to three times your money. The number they choose is pretty Pretty arbitrary. Of course, the bigger the promise is, the more exciting it is for investors, and the more investors are like, oh yeah, well, you know, if that's what the promise is, and, and that seems realistic because of this math that I got in some kind of pamphlet, then I'm gonna backwards my math and say I'm getting a 15% return, not just a basic 6% return. We wanna try to double that, so you get 10 or 12% on your money every year. That's what syndicating is. So that's why I say it's not 4,000 units, it's maybe 10 complexes, maybe even 20 complexes or five complexes, right? It just depends, it varies, and that doesn't really matter. But what does matter is when people say, well, why would I listen to you when Grant owns $750 million in net worth? He doesn't, that's not true. And I'm not here to compare and I'm not here to take stabs at what his net worth maybe really is, whether it's 20 million, 50 million, whatever it is, it, it doesn't really matter. I, I admire him as a person. But it's important to know some details when you watch these videos so you can have perspective. And when you watch other people talk on YouTube, you can start realizing what's bold. So here's the other thing. Grant Cardone is a master of other people's money. Here's what I mean by that. So let's go with the same example. 80 people put money in. Now there's equity. That's money in the deal is $8 million. Debt is $24 million. But now, Grant Cardone controls that $8 million of equity, right? So somebody might be able to come to Grant and say, hey, you control $8 million of equity, not the individual investors. They don't have control, they're limited partners. How about we give you $5 million against that equity, and then you could go finance another project of your own or start another fund with that $5 million as sort of entry money. So when you post there's a new fund, you could say, oh, it's already 25% funded. So you're kind of moving money around. So really what you've become now is a master of other people's money using other people's money. This is backed by one thing, debt. It's a brilliant model. I have to admire the guy. I have to say it's totally brilliant. Now let's talk fees. Look, I get it. Some people think very cynically that I'm just trying to make these videos to get more clients. I think I already addressed that at the beginning part of this video. But what I really want to try to do is empower you. Empower you to see how could you get started doing this yourself. If you want to invest with Grant's Fund, you need to figure out how to get there. Dave Ramsey isn't going to get you there unless you're 80 when you get there. Come on, Dave. I love you, bro. But look, debt squashed you. So now you tell people not to use debt when the truth is there is some debt that's good. I don't know why I have this big paper back here. Maybe because I want to make YouTube videos with paper one day. Probably not. Uh, monsters for working in the middle of the night. 
And see this big gun case here? It's not what you think. Watch this. See what I mean? Oh, and look what's coming in. Hey, what are you doing, little guy? Somebody told me in the comments they thought I was passive aggressive when I was talking about Dave or Grant the last time. I don't think I am. Remember guys, I'm not trying to slam anybody, I'm just sharing perspective. So Grant Cardone always talks about having an exit strategy. Let's try to figure out why and what benefit there is to having an exit strategy. Deals, how to exit deals. We'll look at it from Grant's point of view. Hey, hey look, it's a single family. The benefit to having an exit strategy is Grant gets to make money. On his website, he tells you exactly what the fees are for his business and the business model. Anytime a property is acquired, Grant takes a 1% fee. Anytime a property sells, Grant takes a 1% fee. And to manage the investment, Grant takes another 1% fee. So let's do an example with this $32 million deal. $32 million, $8 million invested. Let's be generous and say the fee is based on the $8 million invested and under control, and not on the 32 million because the numbers would be ridiculous. What's that? <laughs> and maybe they are ridiculous. 1% of $8 million is $80,000. On purchase, $80,000 to grant. And we put the deal under contract like, bang, you just tell me what your terms are and I'll give them to you. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. For the management, every single year, $80,000 to grant. And upon the sale of the property, $80,000 to grant. You're the one that decided to work for 1%. Don't tell me, man. Oh my God, dude, don't oh my God me. You're the one that picked that freaking job. And then you wonder, well, I mean, okay, so there's not that big of an incentive to sell a property, right? No, no, there, there is, we're getting to that. What's brilliant about that 1% in the middle that kind of slides in there, as in not the 1% to purchase and find the property or 1% to sell the property, is that's not to manage the building. That management expense, oh no, 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 that's coming out of the investor's pockets for what it costs to operate the building, right? But so it's not a management fee. It's a management fee to manage the manager. That means if you have a 400 unit building, there's going to be an on-site management company. That company is going to get a fee and Grant takes 1% of that $8 million to manage that management company. Now let's talk about the real killer as to why the exit strategy is the best business model Grant has ever come up with. And I'm so excited for him, but you should know about it. Hey, Gary, how are you doing? I, I don't know if this is one of them, but if you know what the snark is, I represented that client on the sale of his house. A lot of people use the snark in music, it's kind of cool. These people must be European. That's pretty cool. Bidet and towel warmer. I can say that because I was born in Germany. How you doing? Thank you. Awesome, have a good day, man. So we don't know exactly 1% of what. It's either of invested capital, which would be $8 million in the example of a $32 million purchase, or it's on 32 mil, which is the capital now under control, the asset under control, which would be $320,000 at purchase every single year once for management of the manager, and then 1% at the time of disposition or sale. But here's the kicker, okay? And this is why the lofty projections, Grant hopes they're right himself. And it is true. It is a huge incentive for him to make sure he's getting good deals. Say you now sell the property for $64 million, and let's just make the math really, really easy. Forget all the expenses and all the other junk. Let's say there's $32 million left of profit above and beyond everything. Grant takes the first 35%. Hold on, I gotta use the calculator for this one. He's gotta take the first $11.2 million from Grant Cardone. The leftover 65%, 20 million, goes to Cardone Capital. Man, I love this business model. Agenda. <laughs> oh wow, but to make you feel a little better, they do waive the setup fee for your account. You need money to start doing this. Grant started with $350,000, he said. My name's Grant Cardone. I started with $350,000 years ago. In but realistically, he's been selling for years in terms of courses and education to corporations. Well, this is, I'm 20, I'm 31 years old. I've been doing, I've been knocking on doors around the country, uh, selling seminars. He saved up a lot of money before he started this. Remember, he's 59. If you're 26, like me, watching this, you got some time, and if you haven't started yet and you're older than that, then this should be your motivation to start yourself. Hey, how about in the meantime, a little bit of shameless self-promotion. Check out my new sign. Eh, hey, colors? You got some more places to see. I gotta get to them. Howdy. <sighs> All right. Well, howdy, folks. I know that voice. Check this out. You know how they do those videos where you go like to the center of the earth? Watch this.
That's pretty cool. You don't want to be in the hole. If you can't qualify, and if you can't afford it, and if you can't afford a little bit of risk. If you're a idiot, you shouldn't borrow money. Because you're going to go yeah. way worse. And if you haven't met our Sprinter van yet, that's our Sprinter van. Given to this big 35% chunk at the time of sale for profit that goes to Grant Cardone, Cardone Capital, you have to see that there's a little bit of bias in suggesting that every single real estate deal should have an exit strategy. And how to exit it. The problem with always having an exit strategy in place up front is that if the market changes, the strategy has to change too, unless you're a syndicator. Buying it is one thing, okay? You gotta buy it, you gotta manage it, and you gotta exit it. In which case, you fulfill that strategy one way or the other, and if you don't make the money, you just apologize. This is my goal. I don't really agree with that, but I also realize that's where Grant Cardone makes the majority of his money, and I think it's wonderful, good for him. Hey, brilliant guy, keep doing it. But that's also why he advocates an exit strategy, and I think it's important for you to realize that as a watcher and if you're thinking of investing yourself. But remember, this video is not about where you should put your money if you're already an accredited investor. This is not about whether you should or shouldn't invest in Cardone Capital. I think what they do is great, and they probably do great work as well. But go into it knowing this additional information, and also think to yourself, well, how can you get to that state of becoming an accredited investor? By the way, the other thing that's brilliant about the Grant Cardone model is hey, your money is locked up in the fund until the project is done. That's great because Grant can really plan out his leverage on that deal you invested in. Take that leverage we talked about, use it in other deals. It's great. He knows exactly when everything's coming due. And I guarantee you, Cardone Capital, we're going to borrow as much money as we can. It's an awesome model. I don't know if he does it, but it seems like it would be a great idea. And it just goes to show the power of having control of real estate. But then on the other hand, Grant Cardone talks a lot about stability. That is the stability that comes with large units. And I agree with him. Large units, stability, he's totally right. Dude, I need the combination of stability and risk because I do want the upside. But until you get there, you got to start somewhere else. You create your own stability. I made a video that I thought was great talking about the difference of owning five single family houses and one 10 unit building. You have both. You got to have one single family and then you got to have some units, huh? <laughs> The big takeaway from that, and you should really watch the video to see all the points and details in that, is that you, you can't just say, oh, don't buy a single family. That's not stability. 400 units of stability. Well, wait a minute, you can't make that comparison. You gotta make a comparison that's fair, which is taking the same market value. If somebody like Warren Buffett comes out and invests $50 million into 100 single family dwellings that are worth $500,000 each, that's stability as well, just like a $50 million complex could be. If I had a way of buying a couple hundred thousand single family homes, I would load up on them and I would, I would take mortgages out at very, very low rates. But you have to start somewhere. And if you haven't started with number one, then you should start there so you can start building your net worth. Because again, that's the only way to get to become an accredited investor to work with Grant. So if anything, Grant should watch this video and call me up and say, hey, Kevin, thanks for showing people how to get started so they can come invest with me later when they're ready. Yeah, now I feel entitled. <laughs> oh my gosh, this place got a cold press juicery on the outside. Look at that. But why is Grant so negative about single family and small deals? Because it means you won't invest with him. Sure, he had a bad experience, like Dave Ramsey had a bad experience with loans. Grant Cardone had a bad experience with a single family dwelling. That's because that's the first investment he ever made. His tenant left and then realized, oh my gosh, I'm 100% vacant. I've heard the argument before. I talk all about 100% vacant in the other video. You should go check that out. We won't talk about it again here. Dang it, they're closed. A pretty perfect example of what I'm trying to suggest. Just hit the market. Let's go check it out. How can you not want all of them? Did it. I don't date night with no popcorn. I got sprinkles. Sprinkles, cupcakes. So what can you do if you're just starting out? Well, how about if there's one thing you're going to do when you buy real estate, get something that needs work. Cosmetic work. I'm not talking about a big foundation fixer-upper or structural remodel or whatever, although if you want to do that, great. Just recommend don't do that unless you're experienced in doing that because it's really expensive. Get something that needs the paint, the carpet job, you know, kind of a spruce up throughout the whole house, bathroom, kitchen remodel. That stuff's fun. It's a lot easier. And get your feet wet with that first. If I was an investor that was a handy type, which I'm not, <laughs> and I could buy a couple of them at distressed prices uh, and find renters, uh, I think that's, uh, and, and, and again, take a 30-year mortgage. 
it's, it's a, a leveraged way of owning a very cheap asset now. So let me first clarify why I recommend you get something that needs cosmetic work. If you get something co that needs cosmetic work, you're buying in the wedge of a market. Here's what I mean. If a property is worth $500,000 as a total fixer-upper, and it's worth $625,000 fixed up, a flipper might be able to pay $475,000 for it because remember, they also have to budget in selling costs and holding costs, which somebody who's going to live in the property at least to start with and then maybe rent it out in the future doesn't have to consider. On the other hand, most buyers aren't willing to get into cosmetic remodels. So that's where you have a little bit of a wedge. The flippers are on the low end and they cannot afford to pay what somebody can pay that's going to keep the property, live in it for a little bit, remodel it, and maybe rent it out in the future. So you got flippers over here on one end. And then you got the move-in ready buyers who were buying the place for 625. And then you ideally have you, which is a small subsect of the population, but that's why you can make money doing it. So even if you have no net worth, folks, you gotta start somewhere, you know? So so what? So so you know what? Maybe you borrow somebody else's net worth. You buy the place for a little bit more than what the flippers will pay for it, beat them out, then you remodel the place. Now you've got equity. We'll do some exact numbers about this. Grant is half right when he says these loans are easy to get. Loans on one to four, single family or multi-unit, duplex, triplex, four units, whatever. Loans on one to four are much easier to get than commercial loans. But Grant says that makes it harder to make a profit. The easier it is to get, the, the more trapped you are. In my opinion, it makes it easier because when you do go to resell, the buyer pool is way larger. As long as you get a good deal out of the gate, I would prefer to have more competing buyers when I go to resell that property in the future, if you even resell it in the future, right? Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. By the way, you can get some pretty cool financing on residential loans these days. You can get what are known as renovation loans to help you finance some of these projects. But let's start by heading over there. Let's check out this deal. Let's run some numbers and let's see how you can make money, how anybody can make money and how accessible these deals are to anybody. But people just don't do them. It's like, it's too easy. All right, let's go. Autopilot on. Wait, it's already on. Good thing this is an Xbox. Oh my God. Check it out. This is what we're going to look at. My favorite kind of listing right here. 882 Olympia Ave. Four bedroom, two bath, 1600 square feet, single story, 1964, no interior pictures, $525,000. Whatever it takes. We're almost there. Barn door, lovehouse.com. Now she blows. Yeah, I'm stopping, buddy. <laughs> so before we head in, let's do a quick little numbers recap. If this house is worth, say, six fifty, dollars totally fixed up, a flipper could really only afford to pay about four seventy five. dollars A home buyer could afford to pay more than a flipper because a flipper, if they go to resell it for six twenty five, dollars they're going to have to factor in not just the renovation costs, but they'll have to factor in their acquisition costs, holding costs, and selling costs. That could add up to another $50,000, and that's why you have leverage if you're going to buy it to live in it, renovate it, and then rent it out in the future or sell it away in the future because you don't have to factor in those selling costs right now. That's why you can always beat another investor and most homeowners, they won't even go inside. I mean, look, driveway's messed up. This is rotting, windows messed up already. Older cabinets, a lot of people just paint these white. I'll actually put a picture of an example of almost this exact kitchen that we just painted white and put new stainless appliances in. Oh my gosh, the difference it made. The pictures I'll show was just a $25,000 reno, which is really inexpensive. Mold, by the way. Oh yeah, killer. Yes. The more, the more damage and funk, the better, because the less competition you have, there's nothing scary in this house. Great, it's just all original. So, I mean, you just start over. Oh, you want to put it in your shower? Just okay. in the shower. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, other level right. of Thanks, dude. Yeah, uh huh. Anytime. <laughs> oh yeah, a little bit of raw up here. This is this is perfect. This is an exact example. Whoever buys this and renovates it, they're gonna make that eighty thousand dollars in equity. These deals come up all the time. Great yard, private. Look at this. Something to look for. Nobody's looking into your backyard. Got the avocado tree, perfectly placed. Great house. 
great, great, great house. Needs a chimney cap, it's got termite rot. This is what termite damage looks like, by the way. Actually see tunnels, which a lot of folks get scared by that because it sort of implies that the whole house is chewed up like that. Doesn't work that way with termites. That, by the way, is called translite. Which is a form of asbestos. <gasps> asbestos! A lot of potential, great neighborhood. It's a big thing, you can't change the location. At the same time as pouring the foundation for that back, I pour a new driveway and then expand this driveway. This whole side, that's almost enough to park a little boat or a small RV. This is great. Hello? The other thing is, sometimes people ask, should I buy new construction or buy old construction that needs to be remodeled? If you buy older construction that needs remodeling, you have much more potential for immediate equity growth. Right, Jack? Yeah. Say, equity. Equity. That's right. See, if you buy new construction, the equity's out of it because people are more than willing to pay market value for those. People won't pay market value for a property that needs work, and that's why you could get a deal, and that's why you could take advantage of that equity by remodeling it yourself. Say remodel. Remodel. That's right. You wanna say goodbye to the camera and everybody? Bye. You wanna give a big high five? If you're still here, you need to leave a comment.